Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Two Legs. This is episode number 241. I am one of your two co-hosts, Andy Nichols. And joining me today is one of the co-founders of Two Legs and also a Talk More Talk co-host. And that's Tom Hunyadi. Hello, Tom. Andy, my friend. Good to be back. Good to see you. It's uh, good to talk more McCartney and uh, looking forward to this one. And how are you doing? I'm good. I'm on remote location today. Special assignment. Yeah. We're, special on special, assignment. we're on special yeah, assignment. So I don't have my usual. I know everyone right. who watches our show says, I love your background. And when our backgrounds change, everybody goes, Tom, right. where are you? Andy, where are you? Right. Where? So we, we, you know, we are, uh, sometimes we do things on the fly and that's what we're doing here this week for 241. But I'm well and um, happy to be back doing a fresh episode. Our last two episodes are, have done very well on YouTube and or also on yeah. audio which were really, good, really fun episodes. We did the um, the um, Rob Sheffield article on Rolling Stone yeah. on the top 100 uh, top solo Beatles songs, which has performed quite well, which has got just about a thousand views, not quite there yet. And of course, our, our episode that we did with um, Daryl Easley on Record Collector is still doing well. So our last two episodes were really high. And of course, all the best before that. So all the best, yeah, yeah. Which has done quite well, almost fourteen hundred views. So yeah. we're happy that we've been able to provide some nice new content out there and keep it fresh, like we always try to do here on Two Legs, right, partner? That's that. That's absolutely right. And uh, you know, and once again, thank you for all that you do, Andy, for you know, recording and and all the editing and helping get the show together. Uh, you know, can't do it without you. And uh, again, everybody out there, you know, thank you for watching and and subscribing. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. What are you waiting 19, for? 1900, you waiting 1920 for? subs. We are so damn yeah. close. <laughs> make make more accounts and just subscribe. That's what people should do. There you go. <laughs> you know, make more Google accounts yeah. and subscribe to it. Yeah. And get that 2K, yeah. which, we, which we, we've been That's sitting right. on for what seems a millennial yes. here. Right. Money. So I want to address something real quick before. I mean, we did see the email about somebody complaining about the headset and the audio. Look, oh, it's, you know, whatever it is, what it is. OK. And I eventually I, I will get a, a more professional setup, you know, but, you know, I think I, your audio know, sounds I, fine. I don't know what that clown's talking about. Listen, I, I, I asked other people. Well, let's not call names, but uh, I just call um, them a clown. I know. I understand. I understand. But, um, you know, I've asked other people and they say they think the audio is fine. That I, you know, but I get it, you know, and, and that's another thing too. You, the, the, you knows, look, we say everybody, every YouTube channel I watch, people say, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, it just happens, you know, exactly. You know, and, and we're not going to sit there and, and edit all of the, you knows out or whatever, but they, they, I don't have that kind of time. It, it it just it, unfortunately it happens. Sometimes we try to be aware of it. Sometimes we are more successful than others. But you know, it just it just happens. So we we'll try to be more aware of the you knows. Uh, but like uh, again, whatever. Get something. You just get excited, and it just it just it just pops out. Anyways, crazy things going on. Paul Paul McCartney's YouTube channel. Yeah, today and yesterday we got these little drops. I saw. I sent them to you and David yesterday. We right. I saw two days ago. I think two days ago. It started. Two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah. We're recording this on the twenty first of March. Um, a live version of when the night dropped. Yes. And I'm like, whoa, what is this? And then today, a live version of Soily dropped from the same show, which I think might have been the Newcastle show. I Newcastle. 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 But, but what does? But but it also says something very interesting, right? BBC Radio. Yeah. Which is interesting as well. But go ahead. Keep going. So, you know, I spoke to our good friend, um, Adrian Sinclair, today. And we have more news on that as well. Uh, right. And he just, I, I talked to him about it. He says it's nothing really super official. Yeah, it's on his channel. But they're just copyright yeah. dumps. They're just copyright okay. dumps. It's all they are. They're, there's no leak of... Uh, you know, a, a soundboard recording of the Newcastle show, or you know, they're just kind of think back to those um, 1963 recordings that are coming out. Three recordings, there you go. Then, yeah, it's just dropped, and then we're out again. It's the it's the same thing. Um, so you know, when the night is soily, so they're out for a limited time. Grab them if you want it, but it is cool to see them. And I even heard yeah. um, this morning on this on the 
um, Sirius XM with Breakfast with the Beatles with Chris Carter. He even mentioned it this today, too, that, you know, he goes, oh, Paul's dropping them officially on his channel, so he must be okay with it. It's just a business move. That's all it is. Because yeah. if, it, well, if, it was any, if it was any big release, he would be promoting yeah. it, and he's not. Right. Well, it's it's more than just those two, too. I mean, um, the mess I lie around. I mean, well, apparently, it's the whole than, show. I've only I haven't seen a playlist though. Have you seen a right. playlist of the whole concert? No, no, no. But I'm I'm wondering wondering if it mirrors the uh, the the CD from the Big Barn Bed uh, box set. Oh, you, you mean the you Wings know, Live Over Europe? Yeah, the Wings Live Over Europe. Yeah. So curious curious about that. Uh, like you said, it's just copyright dump. Actually, you know, when you click on the link, right, you go to the video, and then when you click on the Paul McCartney to go to his YouTube channel, you know, it, you just, where is it? Right, it's gone. It's gone. Right. So, <laughs> so, so it's really interesting how you find these things to begin with when they're not there. You know, it's, right. It's, it's not just like you go to the Paul McCartney YouTube channel, and then and there they all are. Because no, they're, they're, they're there, and then they're, they're gone. Yeah. Right. Um, so, but it was cool. It had a nice little picture, you know, Paul, Linda, and Denny there, you know, Wings Live right, right. in concert and stuff in BBC, as you mentioned yeah. to your point. But, so, but what does it have to do with the BBC? I mean, was it actually played on BBC radio? That's a question for Adrian Sinclair. <laughs> right. Um, right. It might have been. I, I don't think it ever was. We'd have to refer to volume one for that, but I don't think any Wings broadcast. Any concert was ever broadcast over BBC. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. And speaking of Mr. Sinclair and Mr. Cozen, great update from those guys today. They released uh, the artwork for Volume Two, and which surprise, surprise, if you did your little homework, you knew the you knew that Volume Two was going to be a blue cover book, seventy four right. to eighty. And today they released the image for that. So it's just another iconic shot of Paul, just like volume one above my co-partner, my, uh, my partner's shoulder there, except it is a photo of Paul from pro the 79 tour, likely one of those yeah. final wing shows. I'm guessing the Glasgow, Hammersmith maybe. show, Glasgow or, or Hammersmith yeah. maybe, which was, which was the, the final concert with, you know, the all-star lineup of Townsend and all that stuff. But that's clearly okay. somebody, one of our, I think somebody thought it was a Beatles shot. I mean, Adrian said to me in a message, he goes, I don't even think Paul owned that guitar when he was in the Beatles. And he probably didn't. <laughs> right. He probably didn't. Yeah. But great, great artwork. And uh, we'll throw it up here in post so you can see it. If you haven't already seen yeah. it, we'll throw the best I, image up I, here. I mean, I love the brightness of the red. I love the, the tone of the red. I love the tone and the brightness of the blue for, for volume two. So, yep. and the image is great. The image is fantastic. Obviously. You and I, we we can't wait to get their hand, our hands, or on, yeah, on whatever, whether whether it's going to PD, the the PDF file or or the uh, eventually the the hardcover yeah. stuff as well. We're 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 totally stoked and so so grateful that we were able to spend the, the, the as much time as we were able to at the oh, fest with at the, fe at the fest and, 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 and obviously and you know we, yeah. there's a few there's a few things about the book that we can't really talk about, but um, right, it's it's right. it's it's, it's from what we were told, it's going to be a whopper. There's going to there's so much detail. When you think there's certain periods of McCartney's activity that you don't think there's a lot to talk about, Adrian and Alan right. have just nailed it. And I'll just leave it there with that because the, the, the and seventy four to eighty and and as they and they disclose it goes up to January of eighty does not oh, go. Okay, they, so they, it's not. Yeah, yeah. They have just no. They because Adrian. Yeah, you know, they have said that. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a great story arc where, you know, he starts at this low point in volume, volume one and then hits the high, you know, by, you know, at the end of volume one. And then, you know, he's still writing that high. And then at the end of volume two, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, deflated. Well, think uh, about volume, so. volume two. Volume two really is going to be Paul and Wings at, at what many are going to consider his peak as a solo career, as a solo artist. Right, think about right. it. Right. 74 to 80, 74. He's riding high. The success of band on the run. Um, 75 Venus and Mars speed of sound wings over America. This is for most people, the meat and potatoes of what Paul McCartney's solo career is. And we've got six years of uh, activity to look forward to in this volume, which we're at with, with volume one, we only had really four. We had 69, 69 through 73, you know? So uh, it's, it, it's, it's going to come out in December. It's available for, um, you know, you can pre-order pre now. You can pre-order it now. 
We'll have the links below. So click them and get those sales healthy for those gentlemen because as lifelong McCartney fans and scholars, this is a book that Tom and I have been like waiting decades for. And these, they, both right. these guys have written it and got well, a book to Mc do it. McCartney fans in general. I mean, this is the book that we have. Well, yeah. For. So and yes, you made a good point. I mean, the healthier these sales are, the, the more they're going to be able to continue for the series. I mean, it can go well past volume three, maybe get a volume four and a volume five as well. And look, and if they're willing to do it, you know, let's help support them. Absolutely. In every way, shape, or form. You know, this is so, going to be the it's, the, it's the definitive work on Paul. And they have, you know, they, they both came up with a great idea and they make such a great team. And we've got, we've gotten to hang with them and, um, them a little bit over the years, and it's been a pleasure to do so. To, right. to because we all share the same passion for this music, and and they're both just great men. And uh, thank God that we have them writing this book. Mm, good point. Yes. So, that's pretty much all the news on on the ball front. Everything else is pretty quiet. Um, obviously, the gig next month for Jimmy Buffett on April fourteenth. We talked about hey, 11th, the eleventh. The eleventh. I'm 11th. sorry, the eleventh. Tom's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's yeah, birthday. unfortunately, I won't. You know, if I if I was still living on the west uh, west end of the country, I'd maybe I'd make it a point to try to get there, but um, you know, not going to happen. No, no. So for so for today's show, we uh, we're going to dive do do like another interview uh, dive. You know, where we kind of play. I know sometimes we've dropped over the years like an audio interview where we've just posted mm -hmm. on a non on a non show Saturday. Today. We're going to do like another – we did this with the uh, 86 Paul McCartney um, – the Paul McCartney special. special. And right. we're going to do it again today with a really cool interview that most of us really were not aware of until we got the McCartney 2 Archive Edition back in 2011. And today we're going to watch in real time uh, the special that was aired um, called Meet Paul McCartney. And it was shot – it was filmed in May of 80, and it was aired in August of 80. And it was – the interviewer was Tim Rice, of all people. Uh, and this is obviously hot on the heels of the McCartney 2 release, which came out in May of 1980. Right. So this is a really nice, again, anything, any interview that predates, certainly predates Lennon's passing, but even even predates Flowers in the Dirt, as in right. the Q interview with Chris Salovic, which, we, which, we, which we, we've had him on. Uh, these interviews are gold because it's capturing Paul in a, before he was, his answers were polished and ready to go. You know, correct, correct. It was different. Yeah. It just was different. This was so. a more unpredictable, Paul. I think, in a way. I mean, you really weren't you, you weren't getting the the same stories, you know, over and over again. This is a more. You just said open... it, man. You just said it. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna. Somebody's yeah. gonna write a YouTube comment. You said, you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> the, but I mean, this was a more open McCartney. Yes. And. Um, you know, it's 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 post Japan. There you go. You just said it. It's gonna. It's a shot game. It's okay. Let's let's play a, a, a drinking that. game. Don't right? say a that. Drinking game. <laughs> Everybody will be drunk by the time this is over. <laughs> oh please! Well, we dropped them on Saturday nights now, so look out. Yeah, look if out. You want to. Hey, there you go. It's yeah. post. Well, go it's ahead, post buddy. Japan. Yeah. And it's but it's not after the break. You know, Wings has not formally been dissolved yet. Right. It's still an entity, right? I mean, they're still working on, on you know, I, I was almost going to say it. Uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's, they're still working. I mean, it hasn't been decided yet uh, uh, whether or not they're going to work with George Martin because he does, does mention that in the uh, in the interview here. Right. So that's going to be fun, and fun to listen to. As we know, we've had Lawrence Juber on Wings, very much a working entity right. with plans to tour and things like that. So, Right. And Wings really right. doesn't really Wings goes on for another seven or eight months before being dissolved in April of eighty one. So it'll be right. interesting to watch. And I haven't watched this interview really since getting the McCartney two box set back in twenty eleven. So this will be really? a fresh. No, mm. you know you watch it once or twice and then boom on a shelf yeah. it goes. Right. True. So this will be a this will be a kind of a fresher look for me to look, to look back at it. So we're gonna bring it up here picture in picture like we do, and we're gonna watch it. You do. Let's go, buddy. Stand by. All right, here we go. Now this now there's there's a couple ways you can watch this interview, right? There's there's uh there's a, a full length 
well, not really full length because it is edited to, to 24 minutes. But then there's right. also a part one and a part two that uh, that you can watch. As right. Well. Which this this version we found on YouTube is the full is the full right. interview. So here we go. Jim Rice interview 1980. Hello. We are gathered here together because Paul McCartney has released his first solo album for 10 years. That is an album without wings or indeed without any group. And I'm here to talk to Paul about it and one or two other McCartney things, which is very nice for me, and I hope it'll be nice for Paul. Paul, good evening, hello, welcome, and other expressions of greeting. Good evening, Tom. <laughs> Why have you done a solo album Tom? at this stage? It sounds like you're saying career? good evening, Tom. I don't think of one. anything else to do, actually. Good evening, Tom. No, you know, it does sound like that. Um, I mean, it's called McCartney 2, which yeah. implies to uh, me that it's perhaps a follow-up to McCartney 1, and that was 10 years ago. Yeah. Is it a follow-up, or are you... Yeah, sort of, yeah. Uh, what happened was I originally just went into the studio to have a mess around because um, I was fed up of formally making records, you know, going in and doing it all properly. I'd just made an album like that. And uh, I wanted to just hire a machine, um, which I did. I hired a 16-track machine and just put a microphone into the back, so it's a very primitive way of doing it. And you bypass the uh, mixing console. And I wanted to just go in for like about two weeks and just have a mess around and definitely not do anything for a new album and definitely not try and do anything properly and definitely experiment with anything, you know, and just any little noise I wanted to do. This was going to be total freedom. And I ended up, uh, I kind of enjoyed it so much that I ended up keeping the machine for about six weeks. And eventually when I played it to a couple of people, you know, just family and local people and stuff, they said, uh, yeah, you know, take a couple of tracks off here and there and it should be your new album. So it's possible right, that so it positive. perhaps couldn't have ever got released. Yeah, it might have failed. Yeah. With the so, so he says, you know, this just should be your new album. It's like, when, I want to know, like, when was that decided? Because we know he recorded this in, in summer of 79. Summer of 79, yes. Right. Back to the Egg comes out in 79. They do the tour. It gets busted in January. Um, but all, but all this he, material, like, all this material was already in the can. It's already in the can, so is, is, is it pretty much just, okay, uh, let's take a break. I just got I, out I of think jail. that was it. I, know, I think it was, and, let's take a break. Japan happened. Let's just take a break. I don't want to do too much. You know, the man just got busted for pot and then did nine days in jail. Right. So the last thing he was going to do was take wings and gallivant all over the world. So maybe right. he was like, because, okay, I did this yeah, album. I recorded these tracks last summer right. uh, messing around. Let's just throw on an album. Who put that germ in his, you know, that germ of an idea in his yeah. head? Probably Linda. Maybe, but as we know, I mean, they did do play coming up during the 79 tour, right? Uh, who's to say that they weren't going to record another Wings album in that time and, and, put a, and put a Wings version of it on that album? Well, and if you, you know notice I mean? too, if it's in the McCartney 2 archive, there, the, the photo of Paul from this, for the you know, for McCartney too. All the other members of Wings the, were, sh yes, were shot yes. the same style. Shot that way, right? Exactly. exactly. So they yeah. were around when when those when those photographs were taken. They just used Paul's photo for the album. But you right. see, you know, Juber and you know Holly, uh, Holly yeah, and Linda and Denny, Denny. Yeah. with those same kind of shots with the yellow background. So you know, obviously right. with the band, but they, they were recorded. But you know, they were recorded solo. And, you know, coming up was a, was the one track that he felt, you know, he could play live and, and get a good version of right. it with a band, but just yeah. do it in a, in a little bit of a different rocking way. You know, I've often thought, right. of, what if he ever tried to do the studio version of coming up live? What what would that sound like, you know? Right. True. And and, and Juber has said when we had him on that they, they, they knew that he had worked, he, that he did this album. So they knew it was it was going to come out. So it's not like it was all a surprise. Oh, like you know, and like if by the but with the releases, you know, by this coming out in May of '80, are the Wings members going? Uh oh, are we done now? You know, but they obviously didn't feel that way. Right. Right. But as it was, it kind of was. All right. Continuing experiment and just left it on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, that was that was all it was for. Really, it was just for. Um, I've got a ca cassette machine in my car. And when I'm driving around, you know, I like to have kind of a something playing. So I just thought the worst comes to the worst. Actually, I'll just have a nice little funky bit of music for me to play in the car, you know, when there's a friend in the car say, listen to this. Hmm. And just as a private little thing, you know, 
if it wasn't good enough to be released. So that was the, like half of the enjoyment was knowing it wasn't going to be released. <laughs> it was. <clears throat> but it was, unfortunately. But you were also there for the engineer, the producer, the artist, everything. Yeah. Do you, do you find that, that if, for example, you're the engineer, um, that you perhaps feel that Paul McCartney, the engineer, has to be seen to be doing something on this record. So maybe on occasions you're giving more time to the technique and to the electronics than you are to the actual songs. No, well, see, <clears throat> if I'd have been doing it, if I'd have known in the end an album was going to come out where I would have on the credits engineered, written, produced, and so on so by, then I would have probably got worried by those things and thought, well, you know. In fact, at one time I was thinking of including a little apology to all real engineers, hmm. and real drummers, and real guitar players. <clears throat> but as I say, it was just a loon for me. So it didn't even occur to me I was engineering it. I just right. had a machine. And the 16 track machine was like a glorified cassette recorder, but it's, it's a professional machine. Microphone right into the back of it. And then I would record, let's say, a drum kit. And I'd just listen to it back. And if I didn't like it, I'd just move the microphone. Because I didn't have all the technical EQs and echoes and all the gimmicks. So I just had to move the mic. So it wasn't exactly engineering, you know. Yeah. It was more like moving mics, really. Do you think that song-wise, it uh, in fact causes a great departure for you? Because to the totally, un, um, totally uninitiated, they would say, well, it still sounds like Paul McCartney and a rock group. I mean, do you think, in fact, that artistically, in the end, it's, it's in fact made much difference? I don't know, really. I'm probably not the person to ask about that. I, in my opinion, yeah, I think it, there is something different about it. Um, we had some other recordings that we were working on. Actually, it was the live version of Coming Up. Here we go. Uh, and the yeah. solo version is off this. <clears throat> and we were working with an engineer, and he listened. We, we'd been working on mixing the, the live one. We'd been working on it for half an hour or so. And then I said, wait a minute, I'll just play you this other one. And he got a totally different feeling off the solo one to the live one. Yeah. The live one sounded like stuff you might expect. Uh, the solo thing, I think there's just a lot of things I wouldn't have done a lot of raw edges, a lot of silly sounds that I just hmm. did for my own amusement that normally I might think, well, you know, that's just a bit of a goof. And we'll, well, we'll that wasn't us, that was him. Later. Right. Mm. Um, so I think there there's, is something different about it. I mean, I wouldn't fight or argue the point, but for me, there's, there's probably something a little bit different. For most of the numbers, <clears> uh, you've been quoted as saying, in fact, we're almost made up as you went along, and, and only perhaps Waterfalls, that was the only one which was actually a song before you went to record it. Yeah, that's true. Whereas with, say, The Which Last Wind Garden, that wasn't two, right? you would have gone in with most of the songs ready. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that was, um, as I say, that, that that's true. Yeah, I mean, all, all, the, all yeah. these songs should all be a part all of... All these right? songs will be will be a part of volume two, but we'll, we'll learn, you know, oops, oops, uh, we'll learn where what? and when uh, Waterfalls, you know, came to be uh, in the descriptions when when they're doing the uh, the uh, recording sessions for oh sure and then how and how it you know produced and all that stuff right. yeah yeah session notes and the sessionography which is which was the genesis of the whole book anyway that's what Adrian wanted to put together was a sessionography of all this music so right um right. Yeah, we'll find out in due course that's why I did it this way because um I would just turn up in the morning yeah bang a couple of drums because I knew I felt like banging a couple of drums. Uh, but I didn't know where I was going to go from there. Do you think there's any significance in the fact that most people will probably say, and already are saying, that Waterfalls is the best song on the album? In fact, one of the best songs you've done for a long time. It's Do you not, think that, though. <clears throat> I don't think it is. Possibly. It is. It's purely from the song point of view, that it, is, that it is best to have the song before you start recording? Yeah, it may be, actually. As I say, you know, this wasn't intended to be an album. I have a feeling now that, like, there's some interesting things on it. Um, certainly people haven't come up to me and said, oh, you can tell. That's the only. I mean, if I, I, in a way, I don't need to tell you that. You know, yeah. I could say, yeah, I wrote them all, and actually, sure. Tony Brabham engineered it all. It's all been done professionally, but um, it could be right. Could be. I, it's definitely the way I've always done it. But this was purposely to get things off my chest doing yeah. this album. You know, I really felt as though I was just going to be bored if I just walked into another studio, the same old thing again, and wrote some songs. It was just something I had to do. Right. You know, I had to um, go Do for a jog. <laughs> the reason I like Waterfalls best, I think, is is partly because it has a strong lyric, very good lyric. And it seems to me that throughout your career, your greatest songs have always been the ones with the best lyrics. And 
the ones that I don't go absolutely bananas about, very few I hasten to, <laughs> um, are usually the ones with the not so strong lyrics and do in fact, as a songwriter of both words and music, regard one side as more important than the other, which comes first? Uh, I think they're both as important as each other. Uh, myself, I don't really feel like a lyricist, but I think if I think at certain times I've done some good words. Um, I feel easier with music. It's just the way I am, you know. Yeah. It just it comes easier, you know, it comes quicker. I can that, that was Paul go again. away kind of now and have a song before I could have a set of words. Whereas with you, you'd have a set of words before you'd have a tune. Possibly. Well, I, possibly, yes. I'm, I'm a slightly different case because I can't write tunes anyway. But um, well, I'm right then. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I do feel that that certainly in the case of some of your very famous old songs, like Yesterday, Here, Don't Everywhere, For No One, the lyric is so strong, and I, and I often wonder if, if, if the really strong lyrical idea inspired those great tunes, I and mean, tunes are obviously very good as well. No, it's all with me. It's, uh, it, in truth, it can be anyway, you know, because interviewers over the years have always asked, which comes first, music yeah. comes first. And you always have to say, well, I remember all my loving was a words thing. I just wrote it on a coach, and I had those words, and then I put a tune to it. But most of my stuff isn't like that. Most of my stuff, it's a tune Tune looking for words. Yep. And And uh, do you think on a song like, say, Band on the Run, you might have missed out on a different case standard, if that that matters, um, simply because the words are fairly obscure and aren't instantly accessible? Well, you know, but um, I don't know, really. I mean, I don't write for that, really. I just sort of comes into my head and stuff, and if it pleases me. I mean, you're talking about this album saying there's not, a lot of stuff that's very good lyrics. So you've got no. one or two. No, but I, yeah. there are one or two that stick out for you. So I like his explanation. Some of the ones like you won't like <clears throat> or may not like. I mean, there's a song there called Nobody Knows, <laughs> which there's no way you could look at it as a set of lyrics and think that is no, that strong lyrics. Because but it's for a, me, it's actually, the just... Bar boogie, really, isn't it? Yeah, but still, for me, I like the words on that. Mm. I mean, they're very simple. You play it live. Been done before. You don't actually say an awful lot. Except they say nobody knows, and actually, the more you think about that, the more you think about all the millions of experts we have on the telly every night or yeah. everywhere telling us how to do it, and a year later they're wrong or they're out of office that's, or that's the world isn't flat today. after all. Yep. And so I attach like a lot of importance to just that idea of nobody knows, and that's the way I like it. Just so nobody knows, it wouldn't be seen as a really good lyric, but you see the way I'm thinking of it. I yes. think it is a good lyric. But it's in a, it's, I, I approach a lot of stuff in that funny kind of roundabout way, you know, rather than just looking at it and saying, that's a great bit of poetry. There's like other reasons why I think things make good words. Do you feel you have any message to give to the world through your songs, or are you just saying what you feel like saying at any one particular time? The second part. <laughs> Whatever I'll come it was. back next week. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't really think of like having a message or anything, uh, but I think occasionally messages do come out. I think nobody knows. That's one of the reasons I like it. Is when I first did it, I thought, oh no, that's a bit of a throwaway, you know. But then I was listening to it and thinking, no, it's not. You know, no, the fact that nobody knows is quite interesting, really. It's quite a new idea. Yeah. Actually, um, I mean, two of one course. of these days is sort of talking about if I can move to one yes, of these yes, days. Do, do, do. Song on the album, one of these days. Uh, yes, I would agree. That's with that. talking about one of these days when my feet are on the ground. Well, that's something everybody can instantly uh, relate to to use an overused phrase but uh and of course two or three of them two in fact are instrumentals anyway so they have no um lyrical content at all I, but one of them nearly did have some lyrics which one was that this one called frozen jap <laughs> or in japan it's called frozen japanese now is that uh one has to ask this is that in any way related to your all right we'll pause this no it japan? was it was done beforehand <laughs> See now, I mean, this is he should have been expl- so for me. He should have been explaining that point at the beginning of the show. So because because then that just cancels out this Why? question. <laughs> Why? Because then then he'll understand that okay, well he he must have done Frozen Jap then in 1979 rather than in response for the bust in 19 January 1980. But would he have called it? Listen, the the, the tune might have been written in 1979, but the title came after the came after that and you can't tell me otherwise that's fine okay but he might not have asked that question if he explained earlier in the show that he did all these songs in in the summer of 79 right yeah if he said everything was yeah. done in the summer of 79 yeah right but he didn't right. so 
True. <laughs> um, the, the, all of this stuff was done summer of 79. There you go. And yeah. then my Japanese holiday took place in 1980, beginning of 1980. And that is a bit unfortunate, that, because it will, it will be seen by some people as to be a bit of a yeah. frozen Jap. But actually, it's a working title that stuck. Um, when, I, when I did the tune, I was always imagining having sort of one and your one eye and all of that on it, you know, because this was yes. in my, I was just doing this for my own insanity. You know, I wasn't thinking of it as a record. And I like doing all that, you know, that sort of uh, funny Japanese singing. Um, but I couldn't think of a title for it. I was hoping it would be called, uh, hoping I could think of something like, you know, Crystalline Wonder Around <laughs> Mount Fuji. Or I, was, I was looking for something short, but that said that, you know, that, that postcard you yes. see of winter in Japan with Mount Fuji with the snow on the top. Snow-capped Fuji, you know, it might have been called or something like that. I was mm. looking for something pretty. Uh, but I couldn't think of anything. So to remind myself what it was all about, I just wrote down on the books, frozen Jap, meaning, you know, frozen, yes. that's the ice, and Jap, it's vaguely oriental. Uh, and it stuck, you know, and I was working with... Um, uh, I, don't know I, I don't know if I buy that one. I don't know if I buy that one, Paulie. I wanted to change the title at the last minute. So uh, I wasn't going to change it, but uh, it turned out that in Japan, the word Jap is like still thought yeah, of as can't being say that. derogatory. Although I think over here, it's been diffused a lot. I think like the, the man who's got a clothes firm, who's a Japanese guy who calls himself Jap, he calls the clothes firm Jap. I think things like that have, have brought it from, for me, a little bit more into line with Yank and Limey yes. and Palm. You know, they're not as offensive as like WAP. Mm. And there are certain ones that you are well offensive. You know what WAP refers to? Yeah. Those, those are the ones you don't yeah. use. And I think the Japanese think that Jap is still in that kind of thing. For me, it's becoming a borderline case of a lot of japanese in the west their own attitude to it so anyway out of uh, not wanting to kind of do a, a a snub to anybody who might be offended in in japan we've called it frozen japanese this is a little bit timid you know but um might as well rather than offend anyone yes all right what is, so you which, gotta what, you gotta what, get so you, which oh, go ahead. are the two instrumentals which and uh, you probably don't like either of them right i mean frozen chaps fine see i like front parlor okay. a lot better Okay, I, I actually name? don't mind, but I mean, both of them are fine to me. I, it's just, just that they're not as exciting as as the others. No, no, but I, they're funky. You know, they're, they're I, you know, yeah. both of them, put both of them on front parlor. I just I think has a nice little synth melody going throughout the whole thing. It would be it would be great radio bumper music. You know, if anybody is old enough to know what bumper you music know, is, you know, for radio stations. But yeah, that would be you know where. You know where they need to play Frozen Jap or Front Parlor is at, at a fest at, at nighttime, <laughs> at towards the end of the night, <laughs> in, in, in the hall, you know, <laughs> in the main room. Just get everybody up and dancing, you know. If you, if you, if you well, dance. how many people, who would be dancing to Frozen Jap or Front Parlor? Me, you, and Joan Borelli? That would probably be about it. Probably. <laughs> you know, not too many people. Most of that ballroom would clear uh, out. Uh, you know, if they try to play in dark room, got a place. Right. You can go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, th the three of us would be bopping, right? Bop, yeah, true. <laughs> Please, um, if, it's, if it's possible for someone uh, in your situation, what's your inspiration to write? I mean, it must be very difficult for you to have any material ambitions. Yeah, but it, it's never really been a, a material ambition. You know, I mean, I remember we did used to sit around when we were, uh, just starting and we'd started to get our glimpse of number ones and we did sit around and kind of think okay now we'll write a swimming pool yes you know, well, let's see, write a swimming pool now let's that's a case of the of an early one being told a lot we by this by this point that story had been told quite a bit oh we'll write a swimming yeah. pool cool. right. they were saying that in the 60s and 70s so by 1980 that was becoming one of paul's oh i'll say that one yeah. you know mm -hmm. Right. Let's ride the garage and let's ride a car to go in it, you know. But that was never really the big incentive. Uh, I don't think that's what made us write the songs. <laughs> so now that in part of the incentive isn't particularly there, you know, because I've got the car and the garage. And that. But I don't really think it was ever what, what I was writing for or else I probably wouldn't write now if I didn't feel like that. I sort of write because I can't help it and because it's a bit of a hobby still for me 
It's something that if I'm in the mood, I really like to just go and do. You know, he does get answered. So he does get asked that question a lot. That, 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 that you yes. don't really have any concrete ambitions now. You don't think, well, I'd like to get into a totally different field of writing. Maybe you'd like to write. Yeah, I do. I do. You know, I have a lot of ambitions. The awkward thing is, whenever I do interviews, someone says that. You know, what's, yeah, what's left, next? Paul? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's left? <laughs> what's left? Well, I think. Oh, <laughs> well, the other one is Paul. If, just if, that's the other question. Um, that's a little <laughs> bit of an in joke, that one. No, but um, sorry, I've got off the track. What were we talking about? Well, this, for example, getting back to the uh, solo album, in in one sense, you know, with great respect for everything you've said, it's it's still basically Paul McCartney working in the field of contemporary rock music, which is great because it's it's among the best contemporary rock music you can get. But do you ever think you'd like to? Uh, explore totally new avenues and, and, and perhaps try and write within the context of theatre or, or film or well, have yourself with just an yeah. orchestra um, as opposed to um, anything that's basically rock and roll. I mean, uh, Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sort of interested in that, like for the first time really. Uh, <clears throat> beginning to realise that I, I might enjoy doing that. I think uh, if you start off in a group and you're not a solo performer, you just get used to working in a group format and it is handy because people will tell you where you're going wrong and you get your own crit built-in critics and stuff but um yeah i have been getting quite interested in the idea of maybe doing something just different i've always had at the I'm back of my mind you know, this idea to kind of do something second. like a musical but generally I like surprised he doesn't say like, well, you know, I did touch upon it early, like, like you know, for for the Family Way soundtrack. Family you know, Way. I did, yeah, I did. You know, Eleanor Rigby. Uh, so I, I'm kind of I get surprised when he when he doesn't talk about you know putting his foot in the in you know his toe in the water uh, for that, and then you know wanting to maybe explore it even more. Well, context so, is context yeah. is everything yeah. too here, right? I mean, 1980. Right. You know, Wings is still pretty much in the forefront of everybody's mind. Big rock star, big rock act. Nobody's thinking right. that 13 years prior he dabbled his toe in the water with a family way. You know, even though we know he did it. You know, it wasn't a. It just you know, it, it's us. It's easy yeah. for us to do it to look at it now. Um, right, right. Then, but I mean, looking at it now, it's you know, it's it's easy to exactly. say. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Only like I don't like musicals. Yes. They give me a sore bum. I kind of sit down, you know, and kind of ooh, I get very aware of like, <laughs> oh, let's get out of here, you know, after a couple of hours. And it's very rare that one well, works. Only from... Usually last about a couple of hours. Yeah. I mean, they're not. Well, you know what I mean, though. I mean, yes. You know, I don't think I'm alone in that. I think a lot of people going to theatre, but at the end of it, are very aware of like having a sore yes. bum. And it always <laughs> kind of made me think, well, there must be something that's, that's going wrong. There must be some premise or something that just isn't quite working but and i've always wanted to be able to crack that and have uh, have myself or people come out of the show thinking you know i didn't never once thought of my bum <laughs> i'm sure there must be the odd show oh, here there and there, are, which, yeah uh... there are yeah i mean west side story was a biggie for me that got me all the way through you know film and stage version but um because you have in fact uh business-wise ventured into the field of, of those kind of songs by... Um, yeah, the older ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah main, mainly we have a lot of older songs. Uh, I, I mean, love those. I mean, that's all, to me, that's all sort of Fred Astaire. And which he loves. Bill Bailey and all those people who I love. I, I love yeah. a lot of that stuff. I was brought up on a lot of that. Yeah. Do you think you're actually getting better or getting different or getting worse as a songwriter? And do you care? <laughs> getting worse. And do you think... Good heavens, really? this is about as good Come as on, Tim. Soul, or it's about as good as Band on the Run, or it's better than yeah. Speed of Sound, or do not think that at all. Um, really I, mean, better you know, than I suppose we're being brutally honest. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't think I was getting better, but I'd put a lot of that down to just paranoia. I think, like, uh, always, if I go to the moment, like when I was writing what, what, what I might think were better songs, I know then I still didn't think I was that much good. So I never really have thought I was much. I just I find it so interesting that because he does his first solo album in ten years, right. we get this in-depth interview, which was produced. I'm assuming by the BBC. Maybe it was by ITV. It was. It was. You know, and an in-depth twenty-five minute conversation for a solo album that, okay, did okay, did better in America, you know. But there was we didn't get this. We didn't get this attention for 
uh, Back to the Egg or London Town or even Speed of Sound or Venus and Mars, like an in-depth interview with just like just just like this. It's for an album that was so low key dropped to get an interview like this. Granted, well, only in the UK. No, I, I no, I think this did chart at number one in the UK. Uh, oh, one in the UK the, and three yeah, here, yeah, right? Three, three here, three correct. Here, with, right. with, with the live single going to number one here. It however, just, it just however, surprises. However, it's, it's 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 an attractive interview because of the fact of what he just went through earlier on in the year. I think everybody wants to interview him because just mainly because of the ju- drug bust. You, you know, think, that's yeah, because, why. Okay. You know, you know we, yeah. this is in this was recorded in May of eighty. The, the bust was in January, right. so it's like okay. Right. You've been at, you yeah. got out five months ago. Right. Let's talk yes. Meaning that if he did not get busted and he dropped McCartney too, would there be all this attention? It's it's, it's well, maybe, but I mean, again, he him being the PR man that he is, of course, he wants to get out and I'll and, take and, it and, and talk I'll about take it and put take, a positive right. spin on it. Right, right. It's just yeah, it's just he's just making the best out of it because he's like, okay, I'll you know I, I made headlines for ten days in January. Now I'll right. go do an interview right. and, and and plug my album, which is kind of a low key, lo fi follow up to McCartney called McCartney Two, and see what we go. Right, right. What we, what we do from here. Interesting. Mm. Just interesting. It's good. It's kind yeah. of what keeps me going, really. Um, how much control do you have over the songs that emerge? I mean, you were saying that in America, everything. Is interesting. The live version of coming up oh. is the single is a big hit there yeah. and over here it's the studio if one can call it that version yeah. um was it your choice to put different versions in different territories no it or did was, it just uh, emerge i'm not really quite sure of should have been whose choice that was the record company tell me it was the djs man and the reaction yeah was for the live ones so i don't know because it always baffled me that malachin tar was I a comparative them. flop in america mm. it seemed to me that the wrong side was being pushed um girls school was the one promoted mm. there well, this is what I mean about the kind of inexactness of it all. You know, it's like, am I writing better now? Am I writing better then? Uh, what's right? What's wrong? What, what record to release? What single and stuff? Um, I'm I'm never really sure of any of that, and I never have been. Uh, we always used to kind of ask our producer, "Do you think it'll be a hit?" You know, and sort of. I've never really been a person who I've not met any. Uh, People who've been amazingly positive and said that's definitely going to be it. It happens once or twice. But you really know it's going to be here. Do you think? But perhaps- I find the whole thing pretty inexact. So what I just do most of the time is just carry on and just always be trying to do something better. Sometimes it's a, a flop, or sometimes like it'll be a major hit in like uh, Britain, Germany, Australia, and certain Canada mm. and, cer- uh, and certain places. Uh, and it's it just won't do anything in another territory. Uh, I don't know anyone who knows all those answers. You Do know, I've no, not met one person who knows exactly what to release, where and when. So I just look at it this way. Mm. <laughs> Do you think because you're Paul McCartney, you get worse advice than you would if you were not Paul McCartney or if you were somebody perhaps on a... Like Tim Rice or somebody? Yes, yeah, somebody <laughs> on my humble level. Do you think people are afraid to say that Paul is not very good or that's the great? And you think, are they saying it because they think that's what I want? You know, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that happens. Yeah. And are you able to see through that? I sometimes, you tell, really. sometimes you you know, sometimes you can see through it. Sometimes you can't. This is a good I question mean, too. I'm not looking yeah. for any kind of absolute answers. Yes. You know, could you could you ever see yourself working with someone like George Martin, for example, again? Yeah, definitely. You know, I could see uh, myself working with like anyone again. Uh, I, I some serious foreshadowing going on with that question. Right. Yeah, because I mean, again, it's just months before they. They meet up and and uh, decide to uh, work together again. Which the first thing, as we know, the first thing that they work on again as this you know new partnership is is uh, we all stand together. I don't have any feelings against anyone or so. so. I could definitely see myself working with George. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he'd he'd tell me if um, something's wrong. But I'm not. I he mean, did. you know, I'm I'm again. Yeah. It's not that everyone yes is me. I'm just giving you sort of. Probably it comes down on that side. Probably yes. people are a little bit wary. I heard a fellow on the radio the other day, in fact, the program you were on, where he was saying, well, Paul McCartney must have a better musical ear than I have. Therefore, it's a little difficult for me to comment. Which is like, I don't know what he means. <laughs> yeah. But he was being asked to comment, and you, you, you need to put that aside. You know, you'd, it's easier if you, because I don't actually mind. I don't mind being told I'm wrong. I quite like it, actually. 
Yeah. <laughs> I feel more sane. I really don't like to get into that position where everyone's yes. Yeah, ask Hugh, yeah. and ask Hugh Padgham own, that. Ask Hugh Padgham and Nigel Godrich like, that look, one. You know, if you hate it, just tell me. But and, I feel much more comfortable. And do they do that? Yeah. So It depends on the people. You know, it's not an, an exact absolute thing. Not everyone goes, we hate it. You yeah. know, somebody <laughs> will yes me. Yes. But uh, I think important people don't yes me. In the uh, next five, ten years, is there a chance, as you were saying, in fact, just before we came on the air, that you would become less observed and more an observer? Would you like to stand back a bit from the whole business and not be permanently in the goldfish bowl? Yeah, it's just, uh, I never thought of things that way, you know, but then occasionally you just spot a few people and you just sort of think, well, they never do much, you know. They obviously don't have a good time. And you look at them again and they're having a great time because they're watching all the people who are doing everything, you know. And it's just, I just think it's a great angle, that. Uh, but, but you must have a basic instinct to perform, because you do seem to enjoy turning up on things like this, and you do enjoy being seen, and you're very good at chatting to people. Even back in the Beatles days, you were always regarded as the one who's good with the press. I mean, do you in fact think that, in your heart of hearts, when, well, uh, when you're 64 and beyond, you'll still, still be, be doing, it. doing it? I think I probably will, yeah. But it uh, was just something we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Go. I think it's nice to become an observer. Um, maybe all I'm talking about is that I'll be more of an observer. Because, again, I don't think that means that you can't talk. It's just, I think it's a good idea. I think a lot of smart people uh, take time to talk sometimes, but not all the time. I think you can get a bit crazy if you're just always talking and making your opinion felt all the time, all the time. Because it's nice just sometimes just kind of sit back and think, right, I said my bit. Now, look, what's he got to say now? Yes. And I'm just beginning to enjoy that a bit more than I ever used to. Probably because it just never occurred to me to listen to other people. <laughs> and do you have any plans at all to ever leave England? It's a parochial question, but... No. Uh, I mean, you're permanently stationed here. I mean, yeah. you can't see yourself zipping off and basing yourself in the States to work on it. I can't see myself doing it. No, I've been advised to do it in the past when uh, the taxation was so high <coughs> in that it was... Hey, Paul, not worth... Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Oh, here oh, we go. Hey, talk. Hello, Tim, how are you? Good All right? <laughs> Very well. <laughs> oh, great to see Is you. It time that, don't say anything. We'll be late. We've got to think. Sorry. That's okay. You're okay. chatting. We've well, got to go back, have we? No, I'll tell you what. We've got the garden party at Buckingham Palace this afternoon. Oh, God. Then we've got drinks at the Baron Fleet for Rothschild. And then we've got dinner with Frank as ever. Anyway, nice to see you. All right? All right, mate, yeah. And so, as we are late... Sorry about this, Tim. I okay, I can understand. Really. Life Listen. It's just one of those things, you know. Hey. Well, you're not going to dress like that, are you? Well, I'm not. I'll get dressed not up when we leave. Come on. Sorry, Tim. Yeah. Thank you. Right, we've got to go now. Thank you very much. Cheers, Tim. Mate. See you, man. Yes, it's a pleasure. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. So, in My the comments... Paul McCartney. You bum. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, that was done because, you know, just he was just taking the mickey out of Paul. Let me come in and arrest you, you know, and, yeah. and do that. But, but I want to know who was in the comment section. If you know who that was, uh, leave us a comment. And yeah, who was that? Who, somebody yeah. being a punk rocker, but obviously, ha, 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 right. let me come up with the cuffs and right. arrest Paul right. because, you know, he just was. So. Who was that? Yeah. Right. But I mean, he seemed to be going along with it almost like it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, Planned. meant to happen. Of course. Planned. Yeah. There so yeah. it's a nice little promotional, you know, interview from McCartney too. Um, right. which we talked yeah. about what it, would it have happened without the arrest? Who knows? But it's nice to see Paul talk about it in the, in that time about the album. Right. Right. He didn't go to a, into a whole lot of detail on the album. He didn't. You didn't hear him talk about temporary secretary or on the way or you know certain stuff like that. Most of the tracks, but um, right. You know, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, before I I even watch it. Oh, and and so you know, I think he says you know about ten times in that interview. Uh, if you're if you're playing along, if you're playing a drinking game, hopefully you're good and uh, good and smashed by now. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, but I love, I love, love, love these 80s interviews mm. from Paul. These are some of the best interviews, whether it's the, whether it's the, um, uh, the, the, 
Selvik or it's the um the, the Playboy the Playboy interview the from Playboy. 84. Exactly, next, exactly. Next or video, but video is the best. Right. Obviously. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And there's a yeah. bunch. There's a bunch. We're going to do this a lot this year. You know, okay. we're going to grab the Wogan one from 87 with yes. Paul and Linda. We'll grab that one at some point and do the same thing. But we like this. It's a nice one because, yeah, we see them on YouTube and we might scroll through a few of them, you know, um, but to actually watch them all and take them all in. I mean, and as time goes on and we get more of these gems dropping on YouTube, there's so many from other people. It's just great to go back and who's got who's sitting on what. So it's nice to jump into these. And and look right. at it at the time, because anything. Right. If you had to pick a year where the interviews became more um, formula based with his answers, eighty nine. What year 89. would you say that started? Eighty nine, right? Eighty nine. Yeah, as as we we get back into the open, as we get back touring, and you know, as as he's doing all of these press conferences over. I mean, every city he's doing like a you know a press conference. Yeah, 80, like 89, 90 yeah. is where he's like, yeah, okay, right. I've got my answers. I'm gonna go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So anything, very candid. Any, I mean, any, the first any, half of the yeah. 80s is very candid. Anything before 89 is a right. gem. So yeah. those are the ones that when we do this once a month or every other month as we do shows, probably once a month. Um, those are the, we're going to, we're going to focus on ones from the eighties and there's a, there, there are a ton. Yeah. There are a ton. Really so this is something we'll revisit probably once a month, if not every other month, we'll see, but for sure, that's what we'll do. But, uh, it was good. Good, good to dive back into McCartney. Yeah. Too. I think I'll listen to it tomorrow. <laughs> see, I think that's know. a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Um, Thomas we should, we should get a, uh, we should get a, uh, I should get a Japanese one. Uh, just so I have one that's labeled frozen Japanese. Yes, you, know, you should. Something. And not yeah. just frozen Jap. Yeah. yeah. Thomas, right. what's new in the world of talk more talk? Well, let's see here. What did we do? Oh, we just had a fun conversation um, where we talk about the, uh, the Paul is live uh, tour, uh, the CD or the album. Uh, we had a great time talking about that. And, and, and the, 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 some of the, the cr- critical complaints it got because of the fact it was so so close to uh, tripping the live fantastic and 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 the, the song selections and the fact that you know certain songs certain big time songs were left off of of that album so we had a great conversation with that the the, the next show we're still kind of up in the air whether or not we're gonna we're gonna do a reaction to the uh, to the one hundred. Uh, uh, solo Beatles songs, the Rob Sheffield uh, article. So we're article, still toying yeah. around with, yeah, we're still toying around with, uh, with doing a reaction to that. So we've got some other ideas in the pipeline. So be on the lookout for that. That's Talk More Talk, a Solo Beatles video cast. Please go head over there to the YouTube channel and check it out and subscribe. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the thing is, you know, we do so much Paul here. And if we just did a Paul on Talk More Talk, but it's also nice to talk about the other three, you know, because we don't want to leave them uh, we don't leave them behind as well because you know they've had you know fantastic solo careers as well. Sure, sure. Well, yeah, that was a good episode. Check that out over on Talk More Talk. It was nice to watch you all again and talking about Paul and, and our friends over at Things We Said Today. Dropped a yes. couple of recent episodes. They dropped a really nice episode on the news uh, over the last few months. Yeah. They dropped, and then they also just dropped a recording of that they did at the yes. panel at the fest. Right. Yeah, that you recorded for him. Um, that I recorded, and according to some people, the audio wasn't great. But what do you want for free? You know, you know. Again, there you go. Four four years in a row. No, <laughs> I, I actually plugged into a soundboard with better quality, and right. people still don't like it. But you know what? I don't care what those people say. It was great. It was a pleasure to record what that interview do, and, and watch it for a great yeah. conversation to have Adrian to have Adrian Sinclair over there, Paul touring all over the exotic locations right. with Darren DeVivo, Ken Michaels. Uh, and Alan Cozen, right. that was a great interview, and I'm glad they posted it. And I really appreciate the recognition they gave me for doing that because yeah. I'm bringing that equipment free and gratis to do it. So to give right. that content because it's it's quality content with great people and great ideas, and it, and it, it needs to be shared and it needs to be heard. So yeah. check that out too if you haven't already seen it. Uh, we got two big concerts announced uh, just recently that I'm sure you're going to be attending. Uh, you know, I might attend uh, one of them, the ELO. Uh, yeah, got my tickets. Over, over, yeah, over and out. Over and out. out. Tour. And uh, Mr. The, the voice of uh, The Who, Mr. Daltrey, is doing a solo tour. 
Daltrey's doing a soul tour. I haven't locked in for those yet, but I'm in. I got my Jeff Lynn uh, ELO yeah. his tickets for September. I got that. I got right. my two tickets for John Anderson and the Band Geeks in May and June. Say. <laughs> yep. I got Barry Manilow in April. I got I got a lot. Manilow. You did Again. see Manilow. You did see Manilow. Was it last year or two years ago? Was it last 22? year? Last year. Oh, it was 23. Yeah. Going that's again. That's hilarious. That's well. That's that's cool. That's really cool. I mean, so, he's still doing it. Look again. These acts, they're 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 doing it for as long as they can. I guess you got to respect that. Yeah. Um. You know, Neil Young's going to be coming here with Crazy Horse. I'm really uh. You going to really go? Want to go see? Yeah. I, yeah. I am tempted to uh to go to to see Neil Young. I haven't seen him since the uh since the uh, the mid to late uh, 90s. Uh, so I'd like to see him one more time, um, because again, you know, we 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 have no idea when it's it's going to be their last tour. Well, obviously ELO, we're going to know this is this their is last it. tour, you know, with the air quotes. But no, uh, I, but I, I, kinda, I believe I believe Jeff Lynn when he says this is it. Yes. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, if on my own channel, I have a new video posted yeah. for the first time since December. I have a new a video. I did a guest appearance. Uh, on a college radio station with a buddy of mine who has a show and we talked all things. Yes. And, uh, I just actually just posted that today and that's episode oh, cool. 20. That's episode 20 on my own channel, which I have, which is, I had looked, my last video was in December because it's a side right. thing and two legs is my priority. And that's what I like to focus on. So, uh, if I get a chance to do a show on my own channel, I did. And I, it's actually at the radio station. It's on, it's on my own channel. You 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 helped me remember that uh, uh, I should write some of this stuff down because I hate when I, we were going to record and then I'll be like, oh, I didn't say that. Damn it! I was on our buddy what? Ed Crawford's call. Oh Mr. yes, Ross Street. yes, of course. Yes, yeah. We I think we recorded that early March or late February, and uh, he finally posted it uh, this past this past week. So we had a great time talking about the the upcoming four Beatle movies. And our and our memories of, of the fest, uh, so that was that was great to hang out with uh, with Ed, and uh, he's been so great over the last eight years. As I as I said before, he's been one of our longest supporters uh, of the show, and uh, obviously I want to return the support uh, for our, for our friend Ed. And uh, it was really it was a big hoot hanging out with him and meeting him in the person. Oh, what a what a blast! Person. For the first time, so we were getting uh, good stuff. We were, we were we were at the TWA airport, and I was getting something to eat, and he was too. And he's like, right. "Hey, your nipples in the flesh." And we met, and he had his jacket right. on. It was great, and uh, I'm glad you you were able to do a nice appearance with Ed and reciprocate right. for him and help him, which was the, nice. Yeah, I mean, the real fun was that Sunday night, which you got you had obviously you had to go watch the Super Bowl, whatever. Yes. I understand, I understand, but. About twelve thirty to one thirty in the morning, you know, into Monday, I it, I tell you, there was some serious, serious laughs to be had uh, that night. <laughs> and I'm so glad I was there too. Yeah, well, was, I, I mean, we hung with him Saturday night. I mean, he was. Yeah, was, that, no, we true. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was a blast uh, hanging with him on Saturday night too. It was. It was. Yeah. So, um, but, so check that out. Call me, Mr. Broadstreet. Head over to his channel. Check it out and subscribe to that channel as well. I'm also yes. um, I'm also doing hanging out with my buddy or, or our, our buddy Joe Mayo on his movie channel every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. We 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 talk uh, we just talk movies. Um, so check that out as well. Great. So that is all the news that's fit to print, as it says on Sometime in New York City. And <laughs> For Mr. Tom Hunyadi, I'm Andy Nichols, and this has been episode 241 of Two Legs, and we'll see you next time. Stay safe, everybody, and be well. to Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast, hosted by Tom Hunyadi and Andy Nichols, with musical contributions by Dylan Seymour.